Hey everyone, welcome to Crafting with JC. On today's video, I'm heading to the hardware store to pick up some very inexpensive wood, and you definitely want to keep watching to see what I make with them. For this project, you are going to need about three and a half to four feet of one by two inch wood. I got a four pack of two feet of premium sanded one by twos, so it's a total of eight feet at my local Home Depot. You can also get some longer boards which are not sanded, but they are a lot cheaper, or you can head to the Dollar Tree and pick up some 12 inch one by two MDF for $8.25. So from this four pack of one by twos, I will be using two of these boards. I'll also be using four five gallon paint stir sticks. I got a three pack for about $1.48 at my local Home Depot. I'll be trimming these down to the following measurements. I want to add some color before I glue the piece together, so as much as possible I'm going to avoid staining over those areas such as the ends of the longer pieces. And I'm using my favorite Waverly Antique Wax. I want the wood to look rustic and naturally aged, and to do that, I'm applying the wax with a damp cloth, and then I wipe it down on the clean side of the cloth as well, and this will dry to a beautiful rustic matte color. For the paint sticks, I only paint the tops and I flip them over, and from the leftover paint sticks that were trimmed off earlier, I trim three of those to about five and a half inches. I place one right underneath like so, just to make sure the ends are straight and I apply hot glue on another one and I place that down right on the bottom edge. And I just want to make sure it doesn't go past the ends of the four paint sticks, but evenly on the edge because I'll be applying glue on that area and I want to make sure it touches the wood that it will be glued to. I apply one more in the center just for more strength. To glue the sides, I'll be switching over to Tight Bond Multi-Surface Glue, so you'll definitely want to use a good wood glue for this part. So I apply glue on both sides of the longer sides of the paint sticks, and then I just push the matching size boards towards it like so. And then I apply glue on the shorter sides, making sure to apply glue on that trimmed paint stick. You can certainly secure these with screws as well for extra durability. To make the handles, I'm going to use a couple square dowels and some of these wood beads. I got these on Amazon. They came in a large pack with different sizes as well as these square dowels and I'll link that below. I trimmed them down to just under 8 inches. I want them to be long and I'm going to glue the beads on the ends. So I apply glue about 3 quarters of an inch from the ends and I place the beads on top. I let that dry completely and I'm going to spray paint them black. You can also paint them with acrylic paint. And once the paint has completely dried, I glue them down like so. I didn't show it here, but I do apply a sealant to protect the surface of the wood. Now a couple tips, if there are some large gaps that are noticeable, especially on the ends of the paint sticks, you can easily cover that up with a small skewer or a coffee stir stick, or you can also make your own wood filler by mixing together the leftover sawdust and glue. This tray turned out so beautiful and rustic. You can display candles, vases of flowers or stems, or any decorative piece. I love how this turned out. I bought a pack of this 18 inch white wood at my local Home Depot. They came in a pack of 10 for about $6.58. They are a little thicker, but quite similar in size to the 5 gallon paint stir sticks if the handles were trimmed off. So this is just another alternative to that. So I'll be using several of these for this project, but you can also use the 5 gallon paint stir sticks as well. I'll also be using three 1 gallon paint stir sticks. These are the 12 inch ones, and these came in a pack of 10 for about $1.48 at my local Home Depot. I trimmed the wood to the following size. Unlike the first project, I decided to glue this piece first before staining. I start off by applying glue on the ends of the longer pieces, and I'm going to glue those onto the smaller wood, making sure they're placed towards the edge of the inner face and not on the outer edge like so. So it's going to be a bit of a narrow rectangle. And I'm just using a carpenter square just to make sure the corners are at a 90 degree angle. 
and you want to clamp this while it dries and I'm using some painters tape to keep it in place. For the base, I'll be using six tumbling tower blocks. So I'm going to be gluing three blocks on each end and these blocks, especially the ones that will be glued on the corners, will give extra support and strength to the rectangle. I want to turn what currently looks like it's going to be a little planter into a wooden toolbox. So for this one, I'll be using another five gallon paint stir stick as well as a couple extra scrap paint stick handles that were trimmed off from prior DIYs. To determine the length of the handle, I need to first measure the length of the side of the rectangle along with the depth of the two small paint stick handles. So I lay them down on the sides to make it easier to measure. I trim the handles down to about 5 inches. I do want it to be a little shorter. I'm going to glue the base down, so I just add some glue onto the blocks and then I place the 12 inch paint sticks down. And because of the curved handles, I'm going to alternate the direction with the two on the ends going one way and the middle going the opposite direction. Then I glue the 5 inch handles on the sides, making sure they are placed evenly on each side. You want to make sure they're even because if not, the top handle is going to look a little bit crooked. Now you can also use dowels in place of paint sticks for the handle. Just drill a hole for the dowels to go through and add some glue to keep it in place. Then I apply glue on the top and I carefully place the handle on top. Clamp it and let that dry completely. And this feels so sturdy. I'm going to stain this with Early American from Varathane, which is a beautiful warm stain. I'm using a foam brush because there are some areas that are quite difficult to reach, especially in the corners. So I brush on the stain, working in small sections at a time. And then I wipe out the excess with a clean cloth. So I just repeat that until the toolbox is completely stained. Now you can also paint this whatever color you prefer, or you can make your own stain with watered down acrylic paint. You can use this as a planter for succulents, place some greenery and flowers for an adorable centerpiece, or use it as a caddy to organize your items. Make sure to seal it once it has dried, and that's it. So easy and simple to make, but wow, such an adorable piece. Now if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more budget DIYs that look like you spent a whole lot more, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week. Until next time, bye!